I all am kid. Today, I uh, will present about the represent open science primary guide opening piece of the phenomenon review for judgment decision taking course as well as advanced social psychology. So the advanced social psychology course students will work on the open science primary guide opening piece and the judgment and decision making course students will work on the phenomenon review. So let's talk about first uh, site 3052 advanced social psychology method science task. This is an important and meaningful task. You have been assigned to either a guide or primer for one of our templates or two or an opinion piece perspective. You will need to provide a guide on our templates or two and discuss your opinion or perspective. This is beneficial for different stakeholders. This helps you reflect, helps you learn more uh, about, about tools or templates or open science and replication in general. This also helps you improve our tools or templates and open science replication education. And most importantly, this can contribute to science and the science community as your work will be shared with the world through Twitter, Open Science Framework, and all the research gates. We are aiming to turn your work into preprints or even publications. We hope you will do well, and we are happy, uh, really happy to help you and discuss with you and make the best out of this project. So these are the guide topics which I will discuss in detail. Uh, Register the report templates, extensions templates, peer review templates, emphasize confidence in the force, empower the sky, replication assessment templates, and collaborative projects guide. So you have been assigned to one of these topics. So you have been using our guides of two templates during the semester. So it's going to be benefit others by providing a how to guide or primer or how to make a great use of this template to choose. So I'll talk about the guide template today, which Philip developed recently. Is this link here? And we're going to regularly update this template. It's a glue doc. You may comment or ask questions or provide suggestions. So you may check out advances in methods and practices in psychological guidance guidelines as a top journal for psychology research methods. We will consider submitting our work to AMPPS. It welcomes tutorials which is similar to a guide that focus on how to use statistical tools. So, for example, one of the groups uh, decided to work on the fast science, confidence in the force, and power analysis guide. Um, in which you need to provide guidance of the, our package of conducting such analysis and how to make the best of the uh, methods. As well as transparent and open sense practices, tutorials are also welcome for this journal. So please ensure that your guides are dynamic with concrete guidelines. Try to be more interactive and consider perspectives of the audience. The literature review of a guide does not need to be very extensive. It should explain the motivation and what the potential benefits and contributions for the readers. It should have a brief summary of the contents. So please provide publicly available code for your examples of demonstration as well as resources used in your demos. It would allow researchers to follow closely and follow conveniently. Additionally, please provide a list of additional resources that can be useful for the readers. First, the action of the guide is to summarize the guide. We provide brief background information, whether it's replication, extension, our assessment, etc. We briefly explain the leads and goals of the guide or two. 
Yeah, no apply, but we mentioned the possible barriers and how one may adjust these barriers. And then you describe the contents of the guide and the possible contributions of the guide. So PIS also provide a managerial summary. This is for the announcements insights such as Psychology Today, a popular psychology or site. You should use layman, layperson friendly language so that your parents and friends can understand. People outside the field of psychology can understand. So minimize the use of jargon. Try to be concise to the point and here. The introduction starts with a background in which you discuss the contents and history related to the issue. Then you discuss the barriers and challenges of the field. If there's any similar to or related to, please mention and describe them. Please define all the terms you use in the templates, concise, simple, key, and specific to the point. You may include a table for the definitions. This is followed by the explanation of the structure of the guide. First, we then we finally. So you should describe the target audience of the guide. Try to connect to the target audience and potential leads of these people. This may be undergraduate students, postgrad students, early career researchers, which mean postgrad research students, research assistants, postdoc, early care assistant professors. Target audience may also be research in social psychology and judgment and decision making. Please discuss the problem or challenge in the field. Connect to their point on the necessity and importance of the guy. Where why there's such a lead? And you describe the development of this guy and templates. So if you develop this guide and templates, this template in 2018-19. So it keeps updating these templates. And Trini has been updating some of these templates regularly. And then undergraduate students from this class, uh, site 3052, are going to help developing a guide for using these tools or templates. So this describes the responsibility of the developers and different group members. This also describes the pre-test procedure. We have been Passing this regularly updated guide since 2018 with undergraduate students and master's students, and it has been quite successful and meaningful. For more information regarding past students' examples of preprints or publications, you may check our 3D website on pre registered applications. So, the next session is about a step by step explanation and illustration of the guide. So first, you describe what elements are included in the template. Or two, this is followed by the explanation of concepts that the readers need to understand the well enough before using this guide. This may be concepts such as fast size, confidence in the force, power analysis, replication, reproducibility, etc. This provides a step-by-step -step procedure of using the guide. Number the list of steps are pre uh, preferred and with diagram uh, or tables as well. Then you provide recommendations, how to make the most of this guide, how to benefit most from this guide. This is an optional session based on your own experiences. This is followed by an optional session of potential problems that one may encounter using this guide. This is again optional and based on your own experiences. So then you provide an implementation example or case study this may be based on your own example or past students' example. You may continue, you may combine this with a two test session. Please discuss the usage and applications. This may include intended usage, which is obvious, but also long intended usage. How may it be adapted for other purposes, for other similar purposes? Um, so that other people from other fields or other people from different designs can use this. Then you will discuss the possible challenges and possible ways to overcome these challenges. This should be based on a broad perspective, 
for example, how to implement this, how to integrate this with other tools. This is followed by a session on recommendations for the improvement of the tool. This can help us improve and perhaps inspire ideas for research, research directions that we may actually work on in the future. For example, 2.0 on the related issue, uh, adapted to for other purposes. We would really appreciate constructive and meaningful recommendations for us meta science researchers and a general science community. The next, I'm going to call about the opinion piece in the time plate in this tutorial. Um, this includes perspective of our assessment, conducting replications design and extension as well as open science for students. Uh, when what science, what, what our students can do to promote open science and credibility revolution. So the abstract uh, is pretty simple. Again, uh, you may describe the current status or context of the topic of replication of extension or uh, assessment. If relevant, please describe the different fields debates on controversies surrounding this topic. This is followed by the main argument, the reasons behind such arguments and the importance of this issue. Finally, you may describe the key takeaway of this perspective. Again, similar to the template guide, the managerial summary is for the lay audience, such as psychology today, one to two paragraph is enough. Please ensure that your family members, friends, people with their psychology or research background can understand. You may actually test this with your friends or family members to see if they can understand. Please don't use drug and please try to be concise and clear. For the introduction, first describe the background, the context, the history, the key debates of the topic. For example, please refer to the literature regarding replication, extension. It's trying to minimize the usage of jargon against similar to the guide. Please just define the key terms used here, specific, concise to the point, and probably the table would be great. And this is followed by the explanation of the structure of the perspective is first read, after that read, finally read. So some of the guy you need to discuss who this opinions piece is for, and this is followed by a discussion of problems or challenges in the field. Why does such lead? Let's discuss the current status of this issue. Is there any dominant opinion? What are the controversies? Please try to check if there are review articles or opinion piece articles on this issue. Try to check the latest work. Then you discuss the potential contribution of this perspective or opinion piece. Then you describe who you are, mention that you work on a replication extension project and replication assessment, which are very useful and meaningful experiences. Describe your experience and what you see hands on. Please be well structured and clear. This is followed by a strength on reader session. Please mention your strengths, but don't overclaim. Please also consider the weaknesses, the limitations. Please try to challenge your potential weaknesses. Ideally, please provide a table or diagram. This follows a session on the potential pitfalls, what are the possible ways to avoid problems. This is optional and based on your experience. This is followed by the implication session. What are the recommendations for practical implications? How to facilitate actual actions? So what are the key takeaways of this perspective? What are the future directions for the field? What can researchers discuss, debate, cooperate, to contribute, to push forward the field? What gap in perspective? Any missing perspective? How about integrating different perspectives for common goals or for science? 
uh, different perspectives may sometimes seem contradictory, but they can get integrated for greater purpose. There are good elements to taking from one perspective, and there are good elements to be taken from another perspective. Uh, we all strive to make science better, the more to enhance science practice, scientific practices. So, what issues that need to be tackled to adjust to adjust for the growth of the field? Again, we prefer tables of figures. Please check out these links we provided in the templates, as well as other examples. So now I will use an example. A lab at 2018. As you can see uh, in the abstract, they pointed out the problems and challenges in the field, which is a problem of credibility in research. They described the framework, which includes four key dimensions transparency of the methods and data, reproducibility of results, reproducibility of the results, replication of replicability of the effect. They also demonstrated by applying this to a publication. Replication is great that they provide referral demo with rep to implementation, and this is quite clear. And that introduction go deeper into the challenges. They mentioned that uh, the transparency, analytic credibility, and methodological stability of meta analysis studies a lot accounted for even with the standard methods because of cold chain. And these are the contests, the issues and the challenges. They also mentioned that some existing tools and describe the gaps and the implementation of these existing tools. Uh, so in your projects, um, please discuss both the strengths and limitations of the existing tools and what are the gaps. Uh, Labar and now Lamhin mentioned that there's a lack of standardization preventing accurate evaluation assessment of estimation of reproducibility, reproducibility and replicability. And I believe this is also an issue for replication extension in general or assessment. So they provide definitions of each dimension and these are general very key and specific for each terms, method and data transparency, reproducibility, robustness, and uh, replicability. Um, for your definition, it's better to use some more lay person friendly terms. So they explain it each dimension very clearly, very detail, good detail. As you can see, it's very specific with reference to an integration of existing standards, such as basic four reporting standards some of these uh, existing standards. Uh, so some of our templates are based on existing standards or criteria. So please describe those criteria. They also propose the scoring procedure and statistical approach for quantification of analytical reproducibility, robustness, and replicability. What are the key objectives of their framework? And it's great to anchor a table like this. Uh, you're probably really familiar with this table already as you used it for the replication assessment and you're going to use this for the replication extension as well. This is for classification of clauses of a replication. Very clear, very reader friendly, demonstrating the replication clause in a continuum from highly similar that replication to highly dissimilar conceptual replication based on different it's not whether the same or different. Um, this followed by a demonstration of framework with two articles ex examples, uh, referring to the standards they mentioned, the existing standards for comprehensive reporting and open science. Um, please try to do the same for your work with specific examples and referring to some standards. Uh, they also provided a false plot. Uh, Statics are great, but also it's good to improve in, include plot like this. And it resizes the effects and the CIs. As you can see, 
there are several several icons here. Um, reporting standard, presence of open materials, free registration, presence of open data, and reproducibility. And they also developed a website, which is great, uh, QAScience.org, uh, which allows researchers to curate, evaluate regarding the four key dimensions, transparency, reproducibility, robustness, and repeatability, incrementally and continually. Uh, in your guide and or perspective, uh, you may mention that people, including students or other researchers, can contribute to our templates of tools, raise questions, and provide suggestions. They also discuss the benefits of this framework, uh, different categories, open points of these categories, you may include a table like this. So as you can see about at L, it's a pretty good example. Uh, it's, it's kind of a mix of a guide plus an OPM piece, as you can see. It, it's first discussing the problems within the field, the challenges, and, and what are the problems of the existing tools or existing ways of assessment. Uh, they also follow it with a uh, demonstration of the framework they actually developed themselves. And this is just great. And then I'm going to try to discuss about each of these topics briefly. So for the registered report template, how to guide this first describe the concept of registered report in which there are two stages. Stages one is before data connection, collection followed by peer review, and then data collection and results with discussion. This is from the Center of Open Science website. For the motivation and lead of the templates, you may mention there has been more and more replications nowadays, but there's a lack of standardization of guidelines that combines many key criteria or tools that are important for replication registered report. You may discuss some of the criteria we use in our replication, for example, at L18, the bio L2018. Uh, this describes your experience in writing the manuscript yourself, particularly the introduction method and results session, which yeah, you're involved in for stage one. For your demonstration, you may also check out examples from past students preprint and publication. Um, this, uh, these links are all available in feed websites and it's quite convenient. Um, it's also very free to revisit the slides and tutorial free video regarding the replication extension. Um, for the extension templates, uh, you may mention that uh, limited guidance replication extension. There's a lead to develop templates or guidelines for designing web extension. Um, please discuss the three types of extensions with, with examples from past students' preprint application. So please uh, consider the challenges of designing extension with references to your own experiences and how did you overcome such challenges? And for peer review templates, you may mention that there has been more and more guidance for peer review, but there's limited guidance or template specified for replication extension peer review. Uh, so we may refer to resources from the templates link, which I'll click on it now. So this is a template that uh, Vidya and I have been working on. And there are a lot of resources, uh, but most of these resources are a lot for replication. There's some of these are for replication, but most of these are a lot for replication. And it's kind of open science-y, but it's not specified for replication extension. And some of these are kind of generic. But it's just, it's, those, are, those, those resources are useful. And they're just great chat lists that you can refer to and you can adapt it a bit. 
and focus on the usage of such dynamics for peer review for the purpose of replication extension peer review. So focus uh, discuss is from pre attention about the important aspects that peer reviewer have to be aware for, for replication extension, open science, transparency, reproducibility, original article analysis, power analysis. Please describe your own experience of peer review. What do your what do you learn from peer reviewing others work? How do you, what do you learn from other peers refuse rock of your work. So it's kind of true way. Um, provide some examples and demonstration. So one of the groups work on the fast size CIs and power analysis guide. The motivation is provide hands on step-by-step -step reader friendly guideline with real productivity, locally our packages, which you have been using. It's provide definitions of EFI size, CIs, and power analysis, and describe this why why is this important, particularly for replication extension. Please describe your own experiences of using resources or package from this guy. Demonstrations to demonstrate uh, how it works. So feel free to revisit uh, Shenyu tutorial to for this issue. And so one of the groups work on our assessment templates guy. And so first, why there's a lead? Um, so there's a lack of two or templates for assessment of static article and replication systematically and comprehensively. So please discuss the following as as best assessed. It. Uh, character, transparency, reproducibility, method, regard, design, where they fit the hypothesis and power. So check out examples from last year. Um, and you probably saw some of the examples already for your R assessment. So discuss your experience to demonstrate. So again, you may feel free to recheck the tutorial one on this replication assessment template. So this is the Kojic's guide. For Kojic's, you may mention that limited guidance of templates of Kojic survey in social psychology judgment decision making. First, please check the Kojic's guide and then check the Kojic's templates here. After that, this track last year example. For example, here I'll click on it this now. So for how do how do you find call checks from last year? So click on this here, OSS pre-registration thing. Then you will find the QSF files. As you can see, um, under archives, pre registration, and analysis, you can see the QSF call checks and document file. So discuss your own experiences with using Kotchix with demonstration example. And what are the challenges? Yeah. So this is followed by a discussion of student perspective. Now I'll discover the experience of doing our assessment. So first you describe what is our assessment, the importance and motivation for our assessment. You may mention that there have been more and more replication nowadays single lab or multi-lab replications, but there's a lack of systematic assessments of this replication. You may describe the potential contribution of our assessment 
as a way to evaluate replications and enhance the quality of future replications. And you describe what is your role and perspective as students working on our assessment. Feel free to describe the challenges you experience and possible solutions to resolve such challenges. And you describe the future direction. How to promote our, our assessment in the field? How to enhance replication quality for the future? And what are the goals work on the experience of conducting replications? So these are just suggestions. Um, you may mention that that's an open over emphasis on novelty in the field. And very often, students' uh, projects lack static of power. Open science education and training are important for the growth of the field with students playing important roles for replications. You may describe different aspects of replication, power analysis, cultures, introduction, methods, and results. This is followed by discussion of challenges encountered and how we, you resolve such challenges. Also, what are the benefits of this student's lab replication project. For a related project, you may check out collaborative replication and education project um, in which they did publish some papers based on this, which highlights the importance of students in open science education and replication research movement. And you may describe how this differs from CLEP. Regarding future directions, you may suggest ways to promote students' replication projects across the group and across different fields, not only psychology. And what are the possible ways to enhance quality? For example, through adoption of our templates or similar templates or other tools. So one of the groups have been assigned to work on the perspective of conducting replication extensions. So first, this describes different types of extensions and the potential contributions of these extensions to describe the key considerations and challenges you may encounter. When you decide such extensions, how and how would you resolve such difficulties? This is followed by discussion of future directions. You may suggest that there can be more systematic guidelines or templates for extension design. Also in the future, people may discuss how to enhance the understanding of a phenomenon through extensions without overchanging the original study design. As well as power analysis consideration or guidelines for extension design. So this is followed by one of the groups that will work on open science for students, what students can do to promote open science and the credibility revolution. The motivation is that um, there seems to be an overemphasis on novelty. And there should be more attention paid for scientific rigor and openness and credibility. So discuss your own experiences with replication extension, our assessment, peer review, method science tasks, etc. So this is kind of sum up the different experiences you have. And this, what are the directions? What more can be done for students? Students can be key drivers for open science movement. Indeed, a lot of postgraduate students are key, move, key motivators and key leaders in open science movements. And they publish some key papers on replication of open science. And I believe uh, undergraduation, undergraduation can play important roles for this movement. And this is just one of the future directions for students in this open science movement. Now I'll talk about the review, phenomenon review for site 2071. Students from the judgment and decision class will work on this review on free JDM phenomenon. And this can also help with the introduction writing of the replication extension. So as stated in the syllabus, free 
four jets, three groups. Uh, how this kid team will work on attribute framing. Um, McKenzie group will work on default bias. And we'll demonstrate his team will work on emotions effect and decision making evaluation. So you may focus on value relation, which is pricing. But also feel free to consider other topics, but it has to be related to emotional effects. So this is a uh, template abstract. Uh, first, you define what the topic is, what the phenomenon is, and you want to cover the current status of this issue, what the impact on the field and suggest ways to advance the field. And why is this important? And then you may consider talking about possible implication, policy, public policy, health policy, environmental policy, mixed findings, uncertainties, and what are the future directions? And it's just a summer wise, it goes to summer wise what you do in this phenomenon review. And again, similarly um, to the templates guide, or the perspective or opening piece, this manageable summary is for the lay audience, such as psychology today. One to two paragraphs is enough. Please ensure that your family members or friends can understand. People without psychology or research background can understand. Uh, please don't use jargon. Please be concise and clear. Uh, for your background, please describe the context and history of the phenomenon. You may describe a key peering article of the phenomenon. Uh, please check if there's any other review of meta analysis on this topic. Describe what such reviews focus on and what are the key takeaways of this reviews of meta analysis. Other than that, uh, please provide definition of the phenomenon or concepts or elements related to the phenomenon. This is important as that it can be a confounding usage of terms, and some people may be confused about some concepts or terms. This is followed by structured explanation. First, we explain after that, and this is followed by, and finally, for your target audience, please describe what this article is intended for. Who is, who is this intended for? What is the purpose? Um, this may be the target audience, may be researchers, policymakers, choice advocates in default effect, for example. And what are the purposes? Uh, for some effects, there may be mixed findings or controversy or lack of review, lack of updated review. And there may be uncertainties regarding this phenomenon or debate. It's also clarified the scope and what you want to focus on. You don't want to be too broad. Uh, what does it not cover? Please provide a route justified rationale for your scoop. Please also describe the objectives and specifications you have in mind. So beginning, um, the phenomenon review can start with a historic starting point by describing the pending articles or authors of the phenomenon. Why did they investigate this topic? What is the purpose? What are were their objectives? How is it similar or different to previously related phenomenon? How did they build their work on based on? What follow-up studies? Uh, what were the initial reactions to the peering article, for example? Uh, this is followed by discussion of the current status of the topic. What are some recent trends? After that, you may discuss factor influencing the phenomenon. This may be moderated constraints of generality. For example, an effect may be weakened or even reversed into another direction due to some moderators. Uh, you may mention other mediators, law, mechanisms, and uh, mixed findings. No findings or findings in opposite directions. Uh, and then please describe the proposed and preconditions to other phenomena or topic. Is there any overarching framework linking this phenomena together? Ideally, please use tables or figures to enhance readers' understanding. Moreover, you can discuss the applications to different real life domains. Uh, so, apart from experiments or surveys, you may discuss if there's few evidence, if the few evidence strong or consistent, 
after that, please try to propose impactful directions for practical or policy implications that you may consider domain such as health, medicine, economics, public policy, and fundamental psychology, open science, etc. But don't overclaim too much. So this is followed by a session on open meta science assessment of the articles. And you have, you have, we work on replication assessments already. So this is kind of similar. But the studies may not be registered. It may not be replication. So basically what you do is you check if the studies are re pre-registered. If the lower studies of the phenomena is uh, pre-registered, are they transparent? Are they reproducible? Which means that rather you can reproduce the results based on the code, based on the data they provide. Are the materials available? Second, um, please check if there are replications or rather with the replication successfully replicate the classic loadable findings of the original articles. Please also check if there's any meta-analysis or review. Are they comprehensive, transparent, and does it adhere to open science principles? After that, you move on to the emerging chance of the topic. Let's discuss if there are key changes or development in the field in the recent years. Both empirical, theory, and practical developments. So any dominant view on this topic? Are, they con are there controversies? And describe the different opinions. When why are there such different opinions? What perspectives do they base the opinions based on? And what are the contributions of this review? What are the potential contributions? Uh, very often in judgment students again, there are going to be controversies, and you may try to integrate them. You may try to understand why there's such differences in opinions. And this there may be mixed findings. And our field may help understand more about the phenomenon, perspective of the moderators, the constraints of congeneriality, or the theoretical gaps. Um, this is followed by the strings of witnesses of the investigation of the phenomenon. Uh, you may discover first you may try to appreciate the strengths of the research done. And this is followed by the for the wounds of improvement. Uh, theory, concept, or character, what are potential possible math problems in such research analysis, collaboration, possible limitation and synthesis or integration. And I do please provide a summary table or diagram discussing the strengths on limitation. And then you may, may discuss the main takeaways. Uh, what did you learn? And what, what should the readers be able to absorb from this review? Just summarize the key points of this review. And this is followed by the future directions and recommendations for the field. Is there any missing perspective or gap that worth investigating? What can the field discuss or the main legs to move forward? How to integrate different perspectives into more holistic understanding of the phenomenon? Are they are the practical issues to tackle? Are, are they theoretical issues to tackle? And how to drive the field forward? Now we'll use an example from Billy, uh, Action in Action Review, published just this year. So it's on action and inaction in judgment decision, linking to long theory, uh, which we discussed during the nature. 
So the actually is a summary of a review article. It starts with the history of action in action phenomena, which has been studied for over 35 years in the domain of judgment decision making. It also describes action in action phenomenon. What is are they? Uh, action in action and perceive and irrelevant differently affecting emotions, morality, and decision. Uh, it describes the key elements of this review. Some very comparison of finding and insights. Uh, we were interpreting the links to the long theory. So a brief description of what is action in action and non theory. So Kahneman and Chavsky 1982 found that uh, action is associated with more regret than in action and really um, try to link other action in action studies to the long theory, uh, which she discussed in detail during the action room, may revisit that. So it is based on the normality of our action and inaction. Uh, in some contexts, uh, inaction may be more normal, but it can be reversed. And this kind of explains the choices people make, the morality judgments, as well as emotions. But uh, for your projects, you you may, for the default effect, you may mention a bit about action and action, for, but for other projects, um, you don't need to describe action and action. This is a demonstration of how a group review should look like. Um, so it's important to acknowledge and uh, mention the related reviews on this topic, as well as got a key peeling classic article on the phenomenon. For example, Philip mentioned uh, Kalman and Chavsky, Chavsky study on action in fact, stronger regret for action compared to inaction in the in scenario. Um, this is followed by describing the impact on connections and emotion as well as decisions. He also described, mentioned um, different real life applications, law, health, marketing, etc. with citation. Um, he's trying to give citations are examples so that readers can look further into this. Uh, this is followed by purpose or aim of the article. The article point out that many action in actions are studied in isolation and the investigation of these effects have been disconnected and that's a problem. Um, the article emphasized that it's important to clarify the similarities and links between the effects. And the effects uh, that the, this article refers to action effect, inaction effect, omission bias, action principle of harm, default effect, which some of you work on, status quo bias, inaction inertia, action inertia. And there's some links and similarities between these effects, but they are generally study separate. And uh, most importantly, um, the review aims to apply a theoretical lens through long theory to provide a unified framework and characterization to better understand action and inaction phenomena. And the aims are explained very clearly here, uh, categorizing into four higher level domains. And this is the four higher level domains. Uh, this is one of the figures in the in the article, as you can see, there's a high overarching framework, the long theory, with four categories of action in action effects, uh, citations of the lot of articles. This is very reader friendly. Um, this covers by the, the emotion reaction to action in action, action in action accountability, related morality, responsibility multiple action in action decisions and action as reference for my deviations. So for each category, um, uh, Philly article mentioned two key facts for each category uh, with uh, classic article citation. And 
this is an odd figure from the article which clarifies and categorizes the concept of normality, what, who, and against what as factors. And this is very clear what, for example, decision to the three types of interpersonal society or individual. Uh, against what law? Uh, class behavior law, expectations, social norms, McDonald's attitudes, writings, etc. And all this contribute to what is perceived to be normal. And normality is a multi faced issue. And this is another table it provides definition of effects in terms of the independent variable and the dependent variable of key articles. It also explains the effects in terms of the long period right here for each of the effects. Um, it clear for the readers process and distinguish between the similar but distinct phenomena. And what are the findings, what are the contents of each of these events? Um, so this is an example paragraph for clarifying the difference between effect, uh, for example, body effect and stigmatized bias. Um, before it that is a bias, who was the default option? Given the choice that, well, the stigmatized bias is who was not changing. A preset reference point is defined in a broader context. So in work, in work, it's important to distinguish between different similar effects. They may have similarities, but they are different. The article also discusses the similarly contradictory findings and provide possible explanation for such discrepancies. For example, in action and action attitude findings, uh, which found that um, that seems the social norms and attitude seems to favor action over inaction. But the other emphasized that um, when there's a possibility of lack of alcohol, huh, then maybe there should be a shift on norm, a preference refresher from action to inaction, explaining the omission bias findings. So you may actually try to provide explanations behind such contradictory findings and such controversies in the field. And this may be due to some sort of moderated or different things that they measure, different time measures, different contests. Uh, that also, also links, the, links it back to the overarching framework the long theory to the real future research directions. Uh, the article identifies several factors as reference points. And suggests the future articles can investigate this interactions of this different references, as well as individual difference and contests in national and national effects. And this is a great suggestion for future direction to drive the field forward to analyze our understanding of international action. So more on future directions, the article suggests that future studies can test the combined effects of different kinds of normality in moderating action in action effects. The article also recognized that there are other theories it's better to be holistic to recognize other theories. One theory cannot ex completely explain a phenomenon, and they mention decision justifiability theory, which can help explain the effects. And such theories are sometimes complementary. There may be contradictory interpretations, but it can be they can help each other. These theories can be complementary to promote better understanding of a phenomenon. Uh, the article suggests that future reviews can discuss action action from other theoretical perspectives, which is great. So you may check out more excellent examples of reviews with this link. So I'm gonna click on this here.
So we few examples, uh, there are two types, brief, short ones, and long, longer reviews. So for your reviews, uh, it doesn't have to be very long. I mean, some of these are three pages long. But it's good to, with this, to better understand what a review looks like. And some of these reviews are longer reviews are quite broad, for example, environmental decision making. But you can learn a lot from reading this. And for your own project, it's better to be more lateral, for example, for default effect, you want to focus on perhaps some specific domains. You may discuss several domains, but you don't want to be super broad. Or for framing, you want to focus on attribute framing. There are many types of framing, but the focus should be on attribute framing. So these are examples for the shorter reviews. And some of these are shorter, four pages, five pages. So now we're going to talk about this individual projects for phenomenon review. One of the groups who work on default effects which is the preference for the default option or for the non-default option. So for the McKenzie et al. 2006 replication group, uh, please check out the article citing this article, uh, as well as the recent meta-analysis, which found that there's a substantial variation in the fact so most findings are positive or significant, but some findings show low events or even findings in opposite directions. Um, it would be great to explain why there are such contradictory findings. There may be some moderators that causes such you no know, findings or reversal of events. And so for your task, please focus on default effect in policy, such as environmental policy or health, medical policy or retirement savings. Next, um, one of the groups uh, I started the attribute framing phenomenon review. Um, attribute framing is labeling the same thing with a different word based on an attribute of that thing. For examples in Hadesky uh, at our 2019 article, two, uh, two conditions are labeled with different labels, labeling carbon price as a test or versus an offset, and this may affect choice. Um, so please check our article citing Hadesky 2010. One of them is Statistics 2019, which found that consumers responded more positively to upstream offsets comparing to downstream tests. For your review, uh, please also check out other articles related to framing in climate change or environmental decision making. Uh, please focus on attribute framing, but a lot of other types of frames, I know there are like gain loss framing, etc. but we want to be more focused uh, please also check attribute framing um, in health medical settings. And the links effect in risky decision making. Um, you may want to focus on fear and hope in risky choice, maybe involving pricing or the role of fat or emotion in risky decision making. Uh, please check out articles citing this golden stretch and because on one article, your replication topic. Um, some other locatable articles include Swiss feelings as George Lowenstein is related to fear and how 
feelings drives behavior and how feelings drives decision making with analysis versus with sense feelings. That's right, a fat heuristic. And Slovak and Josh Lowen said two of the biggest limits in judgment and decision making, especially working on the role of fat in risky choice. So this is an end. Feel free to ask questions and these are our references. Uh, you may also post on Slack regarding the questions. Y'all, you may ask now. <laughs>